Welcome everyone to another edition of The Score. Wiley Baker with you here. As a reminder, The Score is a sports show here on AACPS TV and the Anne Arundel County YouTube channel, where our Athletes in Action show focuses on a specific team at an Anne Arundel County public school. The Score zeroes in on an essential individual in the life of Anne Arundel County Public Schools athletics. And today, we have one such individual for sure. I would like to introduce from Arundel High School Athletics, their athletic trainer, and also from MedStar Sports Medicine, Kelly Crow. Kelly, thank you so much for joining me today. Of thank you for having me, Wiley. Well, talk a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about Kelly Crow. Sure. Um, I was born and raised in Worcester, Massachusetts. Grew up there my whole life. I um, went to Boston University to study athletic training. I got my bachelor's in athletic training there. Um, I always knew I wanted to be in the, the medical field and then researching fields that just that profession really, I was really drawn to that. Um, because not only does it encompass so many aspects of health, you have the prevention side and the evaluation and the rehabilitation side but you also get to be around sports for a living, which mm -hmm. is pretty awesome. Um, you know, I was an athlete myself, and then growing up watching sports, it was just a really cool profession to be a part of. And so then I went to Old Dominion University for grad school. I got my master's in athletic training there um, because I wasn't quite sure once I, once I graduated from Boston uh, what I wanted to do. I hadn't really figured it out um, because there's a lot of different avenues that athletic trainers can, can work in. Sure. And so I got my master's there. I had my grad assistantship position at Lake Taylor High School, which was a two-year position there. And that was just, that really instilled in me a passion to be in the, the secondary school. So here I am working uh, for MedStar Sports Medicine and now at Arundel High School. And we're glad you're here for sure in Anne Arundel County uh, with our yes. public schools. Talk to us a little bit about uh, your athletic career. I I'm intrigued. Oh. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you did. It wasn't quite a co career. Okay. Um, I just I played soccer in high school. Okay. Uh, I ran track as well and then I just continued that through college, just intramurals and, and on the side. And I still stay active today. So. Very good. I discuss a little bit about um, your advice or expertise uh, that you've learned through playing and now uh, being an athletic trainer. What do you tell players and coaches even before they get onto the field to really uh, assist them in preventing injuries or even having the, the chance for an injury to happen? Yes, so the big thing with prevention is just identifying some weaknesses and deficits from the start. So just kind of knowing your athlete and knowing your sports team. So I've worked a lot with my coaches and my coaches do a great job with um, strength and conditioning in the off season. Okay. So getting strong in the off season because that can definitely prevent injuries. You're looking at the, the whole athlete and not just um, you know their sports specifics. Mm -hmm. So working with them on their um, strength programs, our football coach um, does a great job with that. And then nutrition and hydration really is the big thing that I always stress, especially now in the, the heat and the preseason and everything. It's just really important to stay on top of staying hydrated, taking care of your bodies, because what you do outside of practice is going to affect what you do in practice. Now, I know I should probably even hydrate myself more. How much should someone hydrate, like a student athlete, how much should they hydrate before they even get onto the field or onto the court? Yes, yeah, so with hydration, it's, it's very personalized to each person. Um, there's the guidelines out there that you should really be having at least eight glasses of water a day, right? That's for kind of the sedentary individual. Okay. But for the athlete, you want to make sure that you're having at least 10 to 12 eight ounce bottles of water um, to make sure that you're hydrated. So it can be difficult for our student athletes during the day because they're in class all day. So that can be hard, especially if they can't have a, a water bottle with them. So we always just tell them that when you wake up in the morning, that's when you really need to start hydrating so that you're not going through the day in a depleted state. That's so. something I guess that maybe schools uh, would want to encourage their teachers and their educators to allow really all students to have maybe a bottled water in their classrooms so that they can stay hydrated as they uh, you know walk throughout the school throughout the day and go to their classes. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, and then um, you know once they're done with school, they do have a little bit of a break, uh, some of them, before they go out to practice, so just making sure that they're eating and drinking before that because a lot of these kids too also their lunch might be at 10 30 or 11 mm -hmm. so they got to make sure they're getting something before they step out on that field 
Here with Kelly Crow, uh, she is the athletic trainer at Arundel High School for the Wildcats in Gambrels, Maryland. She also works with MedStar Sports Medicine. And Kelly, uh, let's go to nutrition. Talk a little bit, obviously different size kids. You have some big linebackers or linemen in football and all of a sudden you have maybe a 106 pound wrestler. Uh, how do you discuss with them about how to eat and what to eat uh, when they're off the mat, when they're off the court, off the field, and then as they get ready for their matches or their games? Yes, so it's definitely, uh, again, individualized to each athlete because what works for one athlete might not work for another, um, even within the same sport, but especially like what a runner is gonna eat before they run their race is gonna be very different from what a football athlete or a wrestler needs. So really it's talking with them and, and working with them about what foods they like and kind of guiding them. And when we talk with them about nutrition, we're using words like limiting and not completely avoiding okay. because they're still gonna go to you know, they're still gonna go to and we just got to give them some guidelines on getting the right amount of carbohydrates, proteins, and then healthy fats as well. Because not only does that fuel them, but it helps them recover. For sure. Talk about the teamwork and communication that needs to occur to keep healthy student athletes when you're not around. They've, again, you know, they've got to limit their uh, fast foods and things like that. What can you encourage them to uh, encourage each other? in regards to eating properly and hydrating properly. Yes, so it's, you know, we're all a part of a, a big team. So uh, the sports teams and then in Arnold County in general, we're all kind of here to make sure that our student athletes are safe and healthy. So we talk to the coaches who then also talk to the kids. They do a good job of educating the kids as well. Um, and we have little take home sheets that they can take with them so oh. that they know exactly what they can get. Um, something that says like meals under five dollars and it has specifics of what they can get um, and just kind of reminding them that what you eat now is going to affect you tomorrow and affect you on the field and it's going to make you better if you eat the right stuff and it's going to make you worse if you eat the wrong stuff so very good well let's talk about this maryland weather holy cow uh it can be totally insane yes uh, and it has been insane uh the, the, this year once again hot one day sometimes cold the next at one point what a year or two ago we had all four seasons in one week <laughs> so what factor does that play specifically in the health of a student athlete a huge factor especially when we're talking about heat for sure so we have a lot of guidelines in place um, at our high school and then in the county in general for keeping our student athletes safe. Um, you know, we monitor the heat index, which is the, uh, the heat plus the humidity. So sometimes that can be a little bit higher than normal. And we just do what we can to make sure that they're having frequent water breaks, that they're staying safe out there. We have safeguards in place in case an athlete does get too hot or we have a heat illness. So we all have cold tubs to help immerse them. And then also in terms of storms, we're monitoring storms and making sure that, again, we're taking care of the athletes, but also the coaches and everybody in the stands as well. So, um, you know, if there is our storms in the area or lightning in the area within 10 miles, we're bringing everybody inside and, and keeping them safe. So, yes, that's something that we're definitely always, we always are watching, always keeping an eye out for to make sure that everyone is safe. And Kelly, you make a great point. The fans get fired up. Yes. They can get dehydrated yes. as well, so they need to also stay hydrated. Yes, absolutely. How much do electrolytes come into play when uh, an, a student athlete or, or even a coach or a, a fan, um, you know, they might just drink a bottled water. Uh, how much would something mm -hmm. with electrolytes in that uh, mixture of that fluid help out? Yes, that would help a lot because it's got that potassium and sodium that helps with dehydration and will help you um, come back a little bit quicker than if it's just water. Um, so it is very important. We have that on hand as well. And yes, we do try to dilute it because it is pretty high in sugar. But in the case with these athletes and the heat, it doesn't really matter. We're just giving them to help them stay hydrated. Okay. Uh I don't have the strongest stomach, so this is your job and my, not mine. I, it's certainly not my forte, but what is, I guess, just so our, our listeners and our, and our viewers know, what, what is the worst injury you've ever had to deal with? And I kind of hate to ask that question, <laughs> but, you know, it's always think the best, plan for the worst, but mm. uh, what, what's, what's the worst you've had to treat? Yes, so we've, we always have to be prepared for anything and everything, and we certainly do that. These athletes keep us on our toes. The worst injury, so pretty nasty ankle dislocation fracture. That was a tough Ooh. one. Um, but also one of the worst injuries are the concussions in the neck and the head injuries because okay. that's a little bit more serious. Um, I had an athlete that 
had a hard hit and then wasn't moving on the ground and lost consciousness wow. for a while. It felt like forever. It was only a couple minutes. And he ended up being all right. Everything was good. But those are always the scariest ones. Um, but that ankle dislocation was probably one of the worst ones that I've seen. Uh, how, how does your stomach and your heart take that? Uh, obviously, you're very well experienced. But you go out there, and I'm sure you're acting just like the mom or the aunt or the yes. sister of that player. Yeah. Uh, so I know your heart's kind of in your in your stomach, in your neck at that point. Uh, how can you really stay focused mentally to make sure you get your job done? Yes, it's definitely, uh, you have to take your pulse. That's what they say, take your pulse first. Um, and then you just kind of get into that zone because these are, you know, these are our kids and we're here to make sure that they're safe. So you just kind of get into that zone of, of helping them and you just want to make sure that they're okay and everything just kind of flows from there. You're just kind of working from, you know, all the knowledge that you have and it all kind of comes together. Here again with Kelly Crow of Arundel High School. She is the athletic trainer. She also works for MedStar Sports Medicine. And Kelly, I, I do want to ask you about that, um, MedStar Sports Medicine. I saw uh, as the, uh, I guess, postlude of your name, you have a lot of letters there, uh, MSED, ATC, CSCS. Tell us yes. a little bit about all of those uh, great parts of your being an athletic trainer. Yes, so I got my, uh, so I had my bachelor's in athletic training and the MSED is the master's in education in athletic training. And then once you are a certified athletic trainer, that's the certified athletic trainer, that's the ATC. And then additionally, I also have my certified strength and conditioning. I'm oh. a certified strength and conditioning specialist. All right. Um, so that is a, a certification that you can get once you have a bachelor's degree. And it's kind of a self-study test, so I have that as well, which helps with athletic training. How much can, and again, I guess this would depend on the athlete, the size, the weight, etc. What do you suggest for, let's say, young athletes, maybe middle school athletes who want to really bulk it up, quote unquote, what do you suggest for them in regards to strength and conditioning? Yes, um, they can definitely lift. I mean, the one of the things that people I think are afraid of are young or youth athletes lifting, but as long as they're doing it safely, um, we always start with body weight first, of course, because people just want to throw on a bar and just squat away. <laughs> but just as long as they're doing it with good form and they're doing it correctly, it's, a, it's great because it'll just build up strength. That's what helps prevent injury and it can just help you become a good, well-rounded athlete for life. Are there any contacts uh, where people can get in touch with you in uh, about 30 seconds we have left? Uh, where can people get in touch with you if you're not, they don't see you at Arundel High School? Right. Um, well, they can definitely go to the Arundel Athletics website. Okay. Um, so that's one. And then the MedStar Sports Medicine website, which I believe is medstarsportsmedicine.org. All right. And that has information about all our athletic trainers. And then Arundel High School has information about Arundel High School. Wow. Well, I have been educated today. I thought I knew a lot about athletic training, but you have told me a whole, whole lot more than that. And again, uh, Kelly, we really appreciate all you do out on site at Arundel High School for Anne Arundel County Public Schools student athletes, the coaches, the fans, the community. Um, you're certainly a blessing to us. Thank you so much for taking the Thank time. You. And, Thank you for uh, having me. Keep doing great work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Again, I'm here with Kelly Crow of Arundel High School. She is the athletic trainer and of MedStar Sports Medicine. Uh, she is doing great work and we really appreciate all that she has done and will continue to do to keep our student athletes and our coaches healthy uh, on the court and on the field and on the mat and elsewhere, even in the pool, should we say. As always, in honor of my mom, Dee Baker, I'm Wiley Baker. I'll talk to you on the court, on the field, or on the air, and with another edition of The Score right here on Anne Arundel County Public Schools Television and YouTube channel.